worship. Today is the beginning of Christian Aid Week. Like many church activities at the moment, Christian Aid Week is being done differently and digitally this year. During this time together, we'll have space to read and to listen, sing and pray, and remember and acknowledge that we are part of a global community. We are neighbors near and far who are going through this coronavirus pandemic together. May our shared experience unite us in praise and prayer as one human family, separate but together in the home that is God's world. I invite you to say the words in bold together. God of all the earth, be present with us now in each of our homes as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer and Healer. Amen. Our opening song is When I Needed a Neighbor. Hungry and thirsty, were you there? Were you there? I was hungry and thirsty, were you there? And the creed and the color and the name won't matter, were you there? I was cold, I was naked, were you there? Were you there? I was cold, I was naked. How many times have you washed your hands today? We approach our prayer of confession and absolution, mindful of the ritual significance of hand washing in the Bible. Hand washing in scripture is closely associated with innocence and cleansing from sin. You may wish to take your device to your sink as we pray this together. Or bring a bowl of water, some soap and a towel to a safe distance from your computer. Or simply join us in this prayer as you watch the ritual of hand washing. Let us pray. As we turn on the tap, we turn our hearts towards you, O God. As we wet our hands, renew our thoughts so we might be transformed. As we lather soap between fingers and over all our hands, purge from us all that brings us harm and might harm others. Remove the invisible guilt and shame that so often keeps us from you. As we rinse our hands with trust in your overflowing grace, making all things new. Amen. Listen now to Psalm 31. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. For I hear many whispering, terror 
on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. When I needed a healer, were you there? Were you there? When I needed a healer, were you there? And the creed and the color and the name won't matter, were you there? Our gospel reading is from John 14, 1 to 14. This is an extract from the long farewell that Jesus gave over the Last Supper, shortly after he washed the feet of the disciples with his own hands. Even though we are now in the fifth Sunday of Easter, these words have a poignancy and power for us to absorb and process. Listen now to the word of God. John chapter 14 verses 1 to 14 Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to the Lord, We do not know where you are, are, are going, so how can we know the way to get there. Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also and from now on you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said, to him, Lord, show us the, the Father, that is all we need. Jesus answered, For a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip? that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me, when I say that I am the Father, and the Father is me, if not, believe because of those things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask from in my name so that, so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. The Psalms have taken on even greater meaning in these exceptional days of the coronavirus global pandemic. In Psalm 31, while the context in which the Psalm is written may not be the same as our circumstances, it expresses many of the honest emotions of grief and lament that many of us are currently experiencing. Verse 24 alone is one that many will find helpful to meditate on in these days when we wait on the Lord for the strength and the courage that we might otherwise find difficult to summon. 
The psalmists praise as we do now for the refuge and fortress of God to protect us and for deliverance from that which is hidden and invisible to us, but would threaten our very lives. While written as an individual's prayer, the psalmist inspires our collective prayer for the global community. In these days of isolation, when we have had to retreat to the fortress of our own homes, may we gain a new understanding of God as our fortress, the place of security and safety we turn to in this time of trial. God is not a fortress that barricades us, but rather strengthens and reinforces, enabling us to look out for our most vulnerable neighbours, near and far, albeit virtually or from a safe distance. There is something refreshingly honest about these prayers of lament, which tell us, God, how things really are. And this shows that God is interested in our physical suffering and our bodily well-being. That's important to remember these days. The description of the psalmist's symptoms is very resonant with our contemporary experience. Jesus also turned to the psalms for strength and courage when enduring suffering. It is verse 5 of the psalm that Jesus quotes on the cross. Into your hands I commend my spirit. This verse takes on particular poignancy as we face the reality that coronavirus has and will lead to the end of life for many of our neighbours, near and far. It is into the hands of God that we entrust them to his eternal keeping. Yet, Christian Aid Week has always been about how we can be good global neighbours, asking ourselves how we can extend the love that never fails to our neighbours, near and far, has never been more important than it is this year. When our own hands and the hands of others have become something of a threat, and when many are no longer experiencing the reassuring touch of a hand on a shoulder, or no longer being comforted by the embrace of a hug, it feels particularly apt to pray with the trust of the psalmist that our times are in God's hands and also for deliverance from hands that might harm us, including our own. As we wash our hands more carefully and more often, we can pray to God to hold in his care all those who have held hands with, carried and hugged others. We can also pray for those who have never had the opportunity to physically embrace, but who we have reached out to with generous hands, giving what we could through our envelopes during many previous Christian Aid weeks. Christian Aid are incredibly grateful to all who have delivered and collected Christian Aid Week envelopes by hand over these past 60 plus years. And for all the hands that have made soup for church lunches, poured cups of tea and coffee, made toast or bacon butties for the big brekkie, put up posters and bunting advertising events, sorted books, and art for sales, and of course, counted and returned the money collected. Thank God for the hands that have put love into action. The world's poorest people are the most vulnerable in this crisis. They are less resilient, have less access to health care, and will be less able to weather the economic impact. Thanks to everyone's support, Christian Aid has been standing alongside them for the past 75 years. They will continue to stand with them through this crisis and will be with them afterwards. Now more than ever, please share your love for your vulnerable neighbours by giving this Christian Aid Week. In John 14, our Gospel reading today, the promises in this Gospel reading are often offered as hope and reassurance at times of bereavement 
and will have a resonance for those who have lost loved ones in recent weeks and months, whether or not as a direct consequence of coronavirus. We have always believed in life after death and find in these words of Jesus challenge and inspiration for this exceptional Christian Aid Week. The comforting words of Jesus, do not let your hearts be troubled, are spoken to the disciples who have good reason to have troubled hearts. Jesus says these words at the Last Supper, just after he has washed their feet with his own hands, talked of his betrayal and of Peter's denial and his imminent departure. These are words of comfort offered for unsettling times and are worth meditating on in these challenging times today. With coronavirus resulting in many of us spending more time in our homes, the spaciousness of the Father's house with many dwelling places may sound appealing, particularly to those struggling to find their own space. Dwelling space isn't a term that we often use these days to describe the places where we live. But in this time of forced isolation, our homes have become places to dwell, more than we may have ever known before. Jesus uses the word dwell again when he talks of the Father who dwells in me. And in these days, when our church buildings have had to remain largely empty and closed for Sunday worship, we are presented with the possibility of gaining a deeper understanding of what it is to dwell in the Father's presence and to know what it is to have God's Spirit dwell in us. Where many are turning to mindfulness and meditation in these anxious times, this gospel also offers us the invitation to spend time dwelling in the presence of God and to not let our hearts be troubled. For those who can find the space, our homes can become a hermitage, a dwelling place for spiritual retreat. And when we are finally able to leave our homes, we can still carry this dwelling place in our hearts wherever we go. The Gospel reminds us how Jesus frequently rises early in the morning to take the time to spend with and in God. Maybe it is this dwelling that the fa with the Father that Jesus is referencing when he talks of doing the works that I do, along with the healing and the ministering, speaking truth to power. This time to dwell with the Father is the source of all his speaking and doing in the world. May we also take strength from our time with God as we consider what we can do in response to those and these exceptional times. The honesty of Thomas in verse 5, a prelude to his honesty after missing the resurrection appearance, is an honesty to be welcomed in these difficult times. We share his uncertainty as we don't know what lies ahead. Coronavirus has disrupted all routine and has many of us also saying, we don't know the way. Thomas's confusion invites us to be honest in prayer before God, to be honest with each other as we seek to follow Jesus in these exceptional times. At some point, perhaps not quite yet, we need too to face up to the honest questions that the response to coronavirus prompt us to ask. Questions such as, how can we reimagine and recreate a world where no one dies of preventable diseases? That we already have vaccines for and medicines to treat. Why are there still more than 7,500 children under five, dying every day from such diseases. These questions take on a greater resonance this Christian Aid Week. In response to their confusion, Jesus' response, I am the way, the truth and the life.
takes on new meaning through the lens of the coronavirus. How precious life has become when we have come so close to our human frailty and vulnerability. What are the new truths that we need to face up to now that the coronavirus has shone a light on the weakness and the cracks in our economic systems? What is the new way we can all walk together to ensure fullness of life for everyone? This gospel passage concludes with the call to action we are encouraging in this digital Christian Aid Week. A call to prayer. Right in the middle of the Last Supper, Jesus encourages the disciples to ask him for anything and he'll do it. He repeats this offer that he will do whatever you ask in his name. These are hard words to reconcile with the prayers that have seemingly gone unanswered in these difficult days. And they may have been difficult for the disciples to accept in the events that were to follow in the days to come. These are the words Jesus wants his disciples, his followers, to remember when he's no longer with them. He wants them to come to him, as he does the Father, with every cause, concern and request, even if they can no longer see him or be with him in person. These are questions and words of hope and promise of connection to us all and always, but particularly in these days when we are so separate but never alone. Physical absence and separation do not mean abandonment. And by entering into the dwelling place of God in prayer, he brings us back to the way, the truth and the life again and again. Amen. I have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. And when we sing together, a line is drawn and hope reborn. This is the song, the song of kingdom come. I have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. When we sing together, a line is drawn and hope reborn. This is the song, the song of kingdom come. We heard the cries of distant neighbors, the dispossessed, the refugee, and God's command to feed the set them free and set them free we heard the word the new commandment and we reclaimed the prophet's call to love the world without condition god's love for all god's love for all i have a voice sing together the line is drawn and hope reborn this is the song the song of kingdom come a reckless love that knows no borders that speaks the truth to those in power that shines a light on cool
Look at your hands. Go on, have a good look. However your hands look to you, they are most certainly clean in these days of regular hand washing to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Our hands really are the most remarkable and useful tools involved in so much of what we do and how we do things, even in these days of social distancing. The psalmist writes of committing his spirit into the hands of God and at times of being in God's hands. He also describes his desire to be delivered from the hands of his oppressors and from a, a hidden invisible net that threatens to entangle him. Our hands have become even more significant in these days of physical distance. We might long to hold the hands of a person that we can no longer touch. We pray for the hands of medics who bring comfort and healing. We're grateful for hand stacking shelves and delivering our groceries and posts. And we're extra wary of everything our hands touch from outside our own home. This Christian Aid Week, we also think of how our hands can be far from idle. They're not handing out envelopes or hosting big brekkies or the many things we usually busy ourselves with this week. Our hands can still reach out virtually to our neighbours around the world neighbours in refugee camps and cramped living conditions, neighbours without adequate hand-washing facilities, neighbours who face the devastating impact of coronavirus with even less of the medical resources that we have struggled to access here. We reach out by clasping our hands together in prayer for our neighbours and holding our hands open before God as we declare our needs and concerns for their well-being and our own. We also reach out by participating in this digital Christian Aid Week through making our online donations and sharing the stories from our Christian Aid partners working on the ground to be the hands and the feet of love in action. If you wish, you can make a donation online to help the vulnerable communities at christianaid.org.uk. Thank you. God, our refuge, we come to you with open hands. Some of us with hearts full of questions. Some of us bruised by bereavement. Some of us fearful of what the future holds. All of us stunned by the events of this year. Draw close to us now in each of our homes as we place our honest questions and hopes into your open, resurrected yet scarred hands. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
with the honesty of the psalmist, the wrestling questions of Job, and the lament of the prophets. We bring to you our questions or our silence. Hold your index finger and in silence ask the question that most burdens your heart or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the cry of our hearts, Lord, silent and aloud for bereaved neighbours, near and far. Comfort those pained by being absent and hold close those who are hurting alone. Hold your ring finger and pray for comfort for those you know who are bereaved or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Easter, renew us with resurrection hope that while weeping lingers in this night, joy will come in the morning. Hold your middle finger and in the silence tell God what you are most looking forward to in the future or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Christian Aid Week Sunday, we pray for and with communities across the world who are most vulnerable to coronavirus. We pray for people living in refugee camps and city slums with limited sanitation facilities who are unable to wash their hands regularly and have little opportunity to isolate from others. We pray for Christian aid partners working to provide soap and buckets, communicating clear, accurate information, raising the voices of the most vulnerable and ensuring they are kept as safe as possible. Hold your thumb as you pray for the most vulnerable those closest to God's heart, or simply sit in silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those of us who are self-isolating, this can sometimes feel like we aren't doing anything. Remind us that we're all doing our part and saving lives by staying at home. Hold your little finger and ask God for what you need, or simply sit in the silence and hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for much wisdom and resources for those in local and national authority, for all frontline staff and key workers here in Britain, Ireland and across the world. Put your hands together and pray for the many frontline workers and volunteers and for Christian Aid partners working to help others across the world or simply sit in the silence before God. Hold the silence together. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we have clapped to honour them, we clap our hands now in praise of your glorious creation and with the hope that the first shoots of another possible world are coming into view. Clap your hands in praise of God's glorious creation and with the hope of new possibilities for the world. God, in your mercy, hear all our prayers. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. And Ever. 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 And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. May the presence of the Creator refresh you. 
May the comfort of the Son renew you. May the inspiration of the Spirit restore you to be love in action, even from a distance, in our neighborhoods near and far, this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.